Hour number three begins live right here, right now on this Thursday on the early line on Sports Grid. He is Donnie Wright's side. I am Ben Stevens. In this third and final hour, up until 11 a.m. Eastern time, some NFL conversation, some hardwood handicapping for another night in the association and in college basketball. You got some picks. You got some previews coming your way here in this third and final hour. Yep, getting you ready to go here. We're only days away, as Ben says here, from the AFC-NFC Championship games. A lot to look forward to, but it looks like we're going to get two really, really good games, betting-wise, sides, totals, and also props here. And tomorrow, of course, Ben, a football Friday one. You will not want to yeah. miss, but before we get there, we've got hour number three. You ain't going to miss that either. The penultimate day before the day, before we get to Conference Championship Sunday, That is what you could say live right here on this Thursday on the early line. Can I ask you a sincere question? Yeah. Are we calling this our last football Friday of the year tomorrow, knowing that next week we don't have a game, it's the Pro Bowl games, and then the following Friday some of us will be in Las Vegas, but it's not on the early line. It's for pro football today ahead of Super Bowl 58. I don't know. I, maybe that's disingenuous okay. to do that to the people out here. So I think we still have to roll with the football Friday. As long as there's football okay. in the forecast at some point, I think we still. And by the way, in March and April, don't get it twisted. I might show up on a nice little football Friday here on the early line and just be like, you know what? We're talking football today. Do <laughs> what? Yeah. Yep. What, what kind of football? The USFL not, and XFL not, merger? Yeah. Not that. Well, actually, you know, we'll call it a football Friday and we'll yeah. just bash that league for three hours every Friday. Yeah. That could be quite some fun. That could be fun. You're looking at your new host of UFL Today live on the Sports Grid Network each and every weekend. That's very good. All right, Donnie is here. I am here. And now the Sports Grid Radio audience is as well. It's a Thursday. It's hour number three, Sirius XM, Channel 159. All of our radio terrestrial affiliates now in the fold as well. I agree, Donnie. Still one more football Friday with football in the forecast next week, even if there's not an immediate weekend of football in the NFL. Hoping to still be here around football Fridays in 2024, will be Jim Harbaugh and the Los Angeles Chargers. Of course, that was the big news last night around the NFL and in college football for what it is worth. Jim Harbaugh making the move, his return to the National Football League, now the new head coach of the L.A. Chargers after leading his alma mater, Michigan, to a national championship in 2023 to tie a bow on his nine-year tenure in Ann Arbor. We asked the public to end out our number two, Donnie, if this was the right call for Jim Harbaugh to go to be the next head coach of the Chargers and a resounding yes from the public, 74%. Although Donnie did say he expected it to be closer to 84, 94% that this was the right call made by Harbaugh. Yeah, Ben, so I'm going to ask you this question first. Did you go ahead and vote no here just to skew some of these statistics here? Or did you vote yes as well? Because, again, yeah, yes, yes is the better version (laughs) of it. Because if you're taking a look at, you know, what Michigan would be here as a football program moving forward, sure, he might win another championship. We have to re-recruit your players every year. It's just a different MO from what you may be seeing five to ten years ago. It's easier to be a pro coach, not because the hours. You're going to work around the clock, but you know who your football team is coming in. You're not saying to yourself, okay, once you have the free agency as well, where is this guy? No, you handpick this guy. But also keep in mind this as well. You know, Jim Harbaugh going to the the, uh, Chargers, I want to see the type of personnel decisions he actually gets to make because, quite frankly, Michigan is one of my favorite collegiate football offenses because it's more of an old-school offense. Hey, we're going to get some big uglies up front. I'm going to get a quarterback that might manage the game. I want a fullback that puts his hand in the gr- puts his hand on the ground, and I'm going to have a power running back and see if that works out. I can't wait to see what he actually does with that Chargers offense built around Herbert as the quarterback. But did Jim Harbaugh yeah. right to make the right move leaving Michigan? It was the perfect, not the right move, Ben. The perfect move to leave Michigan at that time and take a job in the NFL and a really good job with the Chargers here yeah. with a lot of talent in a great city. Completely agree. The three pronged approach of this, it was the perfect time for Harbaugh to make this move to the NFL for the last few off seasons. It has been widely speculated that he was interested in getting back to the National Football League for the LA Chargers, an A plus hire to bring in an organizational builder. With your young quarterback in Justin Herbert, who you just paid a ton to and need to start proving it with actual significant wins. 
not just good performances in the regular season, but playoff victories. And for the Michigan aspect of it all, with a murky future moving forward, Jim Harbaugh was not going to stick around to see it play out. We'll get to that in just a moment. But as you focus on Jim Harbaugh, Donnie, we talked about it early on in the opening hour, a guy that wins at all costs. What those costs look like and what that truly means, that's a conversation for a different day. But he is a program builder. He is an organizational cornerstone. Where he goes, he wins, and he finds nearly immediate success. Michigan is one of the blue bloods, if you want to call it that, the premier brands and programs in college football. But they had not won a national championship prior to this year since 1997. And before Jim Harbaugh returned to his alma mater in 2015, Brady Hoke was there, and the Wolverines finished below 500 at 5-7. and seven. When he got to the San Francisco 49ers, it wasn't taking over for Kyle Shanahan and a Niners team that made the NFC Championship game four of the last five years. It was a Niners team with a 6-10 and 10 record. And Jim Harbaugh brought them to the NFC Championship game his very first year as an NFL head coach. He did it at the FCS level with the University of San Diego. He did it with a proud Stanford football program that had been dismal, a afterthought in the Pac-10 or Pac-12. And he brought them back to national relevancy and set the groundwork for that program to still be a cornerstone of that conference. Jim Harbaugh just wins, and that will be his task almost immediately for an L.A. team, Donnie, that has all the talent available, but a Chargers team that has fallen well short of expectation each and every year with Justin Herbert. And I think that what you're pointing out here under Jim Harbaugh, and this is why he's such a great hire, he leaves your organization better than he found it here. You're bringing yeah. Jim Harbaugh in here to say, you know what, we're the second fiddle again here in Los Angeles. Not only with just the move here, but the Rams won a Super Bowl. So you're already behind the eight ball trying to get notoriety. So we always joke about in Los Angeles with the Lakers and the Clippers. Hey, you're only a game or two behind. No, you're not. You're like 15 championships behind the belt right now going after it. So you need that cachet as a head coach that can turn that city around and be a lightning rod here. And the one thing you're going to get is a competent football team on a week-to-week basis. And I love the fact that he's going to come in, probably be able to pick his own staff, and rightfully so. I'm interested to see who his offensive coordinator is going to yeah. be, his D coordinator is going to be, and also some of the early changes in free agency he makes to that team. Love the move for Harbaugh going back to the NFL. Love it even more that he's with the Chargers, Ben. Jesse Minter, the defensive coordinator the past two years in Michigan. Might he be joining in L.A.? That's been reported. Connor Stallion. Greg Roman was the OC in San Francisco. Might he come to Los Angeles? We'll get more of this Harbaugh reaction next. Sunday night as the Chiefs are now headed back to a sixth championship game. An extremely fun, clean game, and then the hijinks ensue. And I thought it was just irresponsible for him to take that deep shot into the end zone. I talked a lot about it on X. I thought that they should have hit that underneath route to Diggs. It was wide open. It would have been easily a first down. Newswire, only on Sports Grid. Kyle Shanahan said after the game it was the same shoulder that made Debo Samuel miss two games throughout this regular season in 2023. Last time it was a scab there fraction, he missed a couple weeks. By video, we don't see that. It was the play that he got hit at a head check. It's more believed to be a muscle injury. X-rays are proven to be negative. They're saying 50-50 right now. The early line. Only on Sports Grid. This will not end well in Milwaukee. 
they will flame out, there will be problems, and we will see what happens of who's the next domino to go. Does Giannis just sign an extension, ask out after a year? Do they move on from Dave? Or do they start blowing up some of the other guys, Brooke Lopez, Bobby Portis, so on and so forth? It'll be worth watching. Betting above the rim, only on Sports Grid. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. We'll look at the Heisman the early line and what it all means. Individual success. You should have tried to get something for Anthony Rendon. Not bought at the deadline. Newswire. We're getting a lot of news, trades, cuts, and some movement in terms of starting quarterback. Pharrell, coast to coast. I want to watch great players make buckets and win games. Game time decision. No idea what the heck the Blazers are doing and what they're doing. In game live. Just prime put time. Yard for a grand slam. The bottom of the fourth inning in a 12 to 2 baseball game. We got football scores going on at Wrigley right now. Sports race late night. Bad. We waited for one and a half. We got paid. Yeah. Yeah. Did like the two and a half. Jumped on. There's no taking weeks off in golf betting ever. These are the best weeks to bet. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. A football focus for Mark Zinno, an intense and fiery football focus live right here on this Thursday on the early line. Mark Zinno, now the man in the middle. Reaction to Jim Harbaugh making the move back to the National Football League and those early looks as we continue to break down conference championship weekend in the NFL. Zinno, thank you for being here on this Thursday. Anything before we dive in, you want to get off your chest? Uh, just make your damn free throws. That's all I'm saying. Like, as oh, a okay. college coach, not in, not in football. if you allow your team to take the court every night, like making, it. like, less than 65% of your free throws, you should hang yourself. I would quit. Like, I, I there's no okay. way I watch my team miss free throws at that rate and then expect to win a basketball game. Like, it, it's just maniacal. Yeah, they wouldn't be allowed to leave the gym until they made 70%. Like, they'd have to stay there all night long. I'd lock the, lock the door and no. throw away the keys until, until they made 70%. I thought we were going to talk about your hatred of the Chiefs. That was my fault for even asking Sorry. a question. Are you referring to Chad Baker Mazzara for Auburn missing his final free throw in his <laughs> three that he no. had at the line last yeah. night that cost us by the hook? No, I had no. Bama minus two and a half last night, so I don't care. I was very happy oh. with it. <laughs> no. Okay. Sometimes, you know, some, that's what we say. The hook giveth or the it can take it. All right, anyway. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so my hatred for the All Chiefs right. is also. Well, there is that. I mean, all right. Now we're just going to go into the regularly scheduled programming here on this Thursday on the early line. And the big news yesterday, Zeno, in both college and the NFL Jim Harbaugh leaving Michigan, making his return to the National Football League, the new head coach in Los Angeles for the Chargers. How would you, Mark Zeno, grade this higher for L.A.? It's the best possible move they can make. It's the best semblance of stability a head coach they've had since Marty Schottenheimer. Um, that's really what it boils down to. Uh, right now, uh, I would probably say that odds makers are going to put the Chargers team win total at 10.5, and, and I would hit the over. Right now, I'd probably say that Justin uh, Herbert's uh, passing yards prop is worth an over because he might lead the league in passing next year. So, uh, look, I, I think that this is the kind of move that the Chargers needed to stabilize their franchise and put them in the conversation as a legitimate AFC contender. Now, a lot of this all kind of depends on what Harbaugh can do with all the talent on the field. We know that Chargers roster is extremely talented on both sides of the ball. But before we get too excited about what they're able to do, you have to remember they still play in a division with the Chiefs. They still play in a division with the Raiders, who all of a sudden seem like they're very good. And Sean Payton may be able to turn the Broncos around. I mean, the AFC West, for all accounts, for my money, is still the toughest division in football. With de deference to the AFC North and the teams that they put together, this is really going to be a gauntlet for Harbaugh to get through in year one. But when you have a quarterback at the level of Justin Herbert, there's no reason why they shouldn't shoot to the top for it pretty quickly. 
From a team he used to coach here, Mark, the San Francisco 49ers, they're going to line up in the second game here on Sunday in the NFC Championship game against the Detroit Lions, a favorite here of seven points for the 49ers, a total of 51 and a half at the FanDuel Sportsbook. Lining this football game up, what do we anticipate here, Mark? You know, I did the same thing last week with uh, the the 49ers and the Packers. I can't, there's like four or five game scripts I put out there that were able to get me an under and a 49ers win, you know, an under and and a, uh, a, a Lions win. There's, there's an over and a 49ers win. You know, there's an over and a lot. Like, there's a lot of different game scripts out there um, that I could come up with for this thing. I'll just say this going in, and, and this won't escape me. The Detroit Lions guys have played exactly two outdoor road games in the last three months. They lost 38 to three to the Ravens and 28 to 13 to the Chicago bears. Does that mean something to you? I don't know. What I do know is that Jared Goff's home road splits are quite different on the road than they are at home. And they're going up against the best defense. And maybe last week was the wake up call. The 49ers needed to say, Hey, remember we got to play everybody tough. Now, The Debo Samuel thing is something that people are hanging their hat on, and I certainly think it's worthwhile. But the way I would dissect this game, guys, and I haven't locked in yet, but I'm very, very close. I want to wait till after we see practice today and what what Samuel's status is. The benefactor of Debo Samuel not being 100% or even being out in this game is Christian McCaffrey in the passing game. I looked at his receptions over and his receiving yards over right now, which is very low in the low 30s. And I would jump on that before we get any clarity. But again, I don't think we're going to get any clarity on Debo Samuel until Sunday uh, when they tip this thing, when they kick this thing off, rather. So uh, I think you're going to be safe as far as the line's moving too much. 35 and a half is that receiving yards prop for Christian McCaffrey. His rushing yards number 86 and a hook. Run CMC has had at least 100 scrimmage yards in games. He has been fully healthy dating back to the middle of October. So it's a seven-point spread in favor of the 49ers. And now that total working its way up to 51 and a half. That happened in the last 25 to 30 minutes is a full touchdown more than what we will see in the AFC Championship game between the Ravens and the Chiefs. Last week, the Niners played with a game that had a total of 50, stayed under. The Lions had a total of 49 and a half against the Bucks. That went over first weekend super wild card round stayed under against the LA Rams how many points Zeno are you expecting to see in Santa Clara on Sunday night again I I think the over correlates to the Niners here not necessarily the Lions Um, look it it, the Lions defense is bad Uh, and if you want to talk about props correlated guys I mean Brock Purdy's passing yards prop is near 275 That's maniacal for Brock Purdy. Why? Because the Lions have given up 300-yard passers in now five consecutive games. Like, okay, so you're going to be able to throw on this Lions defense one way or another. They can stop the run. I'm not saying the 49ers won't run, but, you know, they're pretty good at stopping the run here. So this is going to be in the hands of Brock Purdy here. And the one game script last week I didn't put out there, guys, was where the Niners only scored 24. Like, I had the Niners at 27 or above, 30 or above in several game scripts that I that I, I, I concocted. And, again, I think the only way the Lions cover this thing and win an outright is to keep the 49ers in that 20, 24 range. Because once the Niners get to 27, 30, I don't want to be in a shootout with the Niners. The Lions don't want to be in a shootout with the Niners on the road. It's not it's not a game script that they're going to be equipped to, uh, to handle. And they're, they're usually going to be on the negative end of that. Like, I would be very surprised – if the Lions sprinted out to a 20 to 10 lead in this thing and the 49ers were the team that was chasing. Uh, that's really the only way that the Lions can win this thing again. And that boils down to the 49ers not scoring points. So over in the Niners correlate, if you ask me. And also very good weather out there in Santa Clara this weekend for that football game. Flipping it over to the AFC Championship game here starting at 3 p.m. Eastern on Sunday. That is the Kansas City Chiefs and the Baltimore Ravens. Some drizzle and rain expected now in the forecast. A favorite for the Kansas City Chiefs here. Market minus 3.5 and a a total of 44.5. Give us a look here. Kansas City and Baltimore. Told you guys for a couple of weeks I have a ticket on the Ravens to win the Super Bowl. I'm not hedging. I'm doubling down. Uh, I took the Ravens on the money line on Sunday night as soon as this thing came out at minus 170. I didn't want to mess with the points. I'm willing to pay the juice, which is pretty you know, lofty for me. I usually never get past anywhere 140, 150. But you know, uh, I'm willing to do it anyway just because I don't need the headache of something quirky happening, a missed field goal, a missed extra point, whatever it may be, a two-point conversion that sort of throws the normal numbers out of whack. That said, guys, um, let me give you a, a couple of stats here on Lamar Jackson 
that may blow your mind, especially when it comes to the Ravens winning this game outright. Lamar Jackson has made 77 starts in his NFL career. He has rushed for at least 70 yards in 33 of them. The Ravens are 25 and 8 straight up. When he gets to 90 rushing yards, the Ravens are 17 and 2 straight up. Lamar Jackson has told you, and he told you last week, in the biggest games, in the biggest moments, game on the line, I want the ball in my hands. He's going to take off and run. He's going to run often. Every third down that he has a chance to make sure he gets a first down, he'll tuck it and run away with it. Uh, especially with the weather conditions, what they are. Lamar's going to have the advantage in the footing. Uh, I think his rushing yards prop, even at 65, where it is now 66, is absolutely – anything under 70, I would absolutely play here. But Ravens' money line also for me. Last week, it was 51 and a half against Houston. He hit the century mark for the third time in his five career playoff games. He is 2-1 and one in those games in which he runs for at least 100 yards. Two, the playoff victories in his career in his five playoff starts. His first start in an AFC championship game coming this Sunday against Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. Mark Zeno, we appreciate the time. NBA trade deadline season? We'll talk about it next. Oh. Sunday night as the Chiefs are now headed back to a sixth championship game. An extremely fun, clean game, and then the hijinks ensue. And I thought it was just irresponsible for him to take that deep shot into the end zone. I talked a lot about it on X. I thought that they should have hit that underneath route to Diggs. It was wide open. It would have been easily a first down. Newswire, only on Sports Grid. Kyle Shanahan said after the game, it was the same shoulder that made Debo Samuel miss two games throughout this regular season in 2023. Last time it was a scab there fraction, he missed a couple weeks. By video, we don't see that. It was the play that he got hit and had a head check. It's more believed to be a muscle injury. X-rays are proven to be negative. They're saying 50-50 right now. The early line, only on Sports Grid. This will not end well in Milwaukee. They will flame out. There will be problems. And we will see what happens of who's the next domino to go. Does Giannis just sign an extension, ask out after a year? Do they move on from Dave? Or do they start blowing up some of the other guys, Brooke Lopez, Bobby Portis, so on and so forth? It'll be worth watching. Betting above the rim, only on Sports Grid. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. We'll look at the Heisman Trophy the early line. and what it all means individual success. You should have tried to get something for Anthony Rendon, not bought at the deadline. Newswire. We're getting a lot of news trades, cuts, and some movement in terms of starting quarterbacks. Pharrell, coast to coast. I want to watch great players make buckets and win games. Game time decisions. I have no idea what the heck the Blazers are doing and what they're doing. In game live. Just prime took time. A yard for a grand slam. In the bottom of the fourth inning in a 12 to 2 baseball game. We got football scores going on at Wrigley right now. Sports race that was late good night. We waited for a one and a half. We got paid. Yeah. We didn't like the two and a half. Yeah. Jumped on. There's no taking weeks off in golf betting ever. These are the best weeks to bet. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid.
trade deadline season in the NBA, a day that Donnie knows very well. We're mm -hmm. about two weeks away, I'm pretty sure, from that NBA trade deadline that hits during Super Bowl week. We'll be out in Las Vegas. But you know what's going to be tough, DRS, is breaking that no. news, not any trade news around the NBA, but breaking the news to Kevin Walsh, old okay, K-Dubs, that on PFT Pro Football Today, regardless of how he might try no NBA trade deadline conversations on a PFT pro football show previewing Super Bowl 58. That's true. And also, Kevin not allowed to talk yeah. NBA. And also, I'm not going to allow him to wear his glasses on set for the Super Bowl either. So tune in for that. Why? Why? Let's get that, new, get that fresh approach, man. Throw people off. You know what I mean? Look at Kevin looking more, looking less astute up there. I like it. Let him hang out a little bit, man. No glasses. Come on. What do you need glasses for? Talk. You want him to look. You want him. <laughs> you want him to look less astute to get yeah. more confidence out of our viewers. Exactly. Exactly, man. We're gonna, <laughs> look, we're we're changing our mo out there. Kevin, no glasses is gonna take this network to the next level. Trust me on that. Twenty twenty four, big year, big year. That that's a pretty good bit, Donnie, because it's like you're just the bully. Kevin walks on set, yeah. you rip off his glasses. Yep. He can't take have it off. those. Three, two, one. Yeah, probably. Take it away. Probably would be better, though, for an over-the-ear headset that I hope we have out in Las Vegas. Oh, it's have the comfortability on. out in Las Vegas is going to be tremendous <laughs> here. You want to tell me between commercial breaks, I could take the headset off and peruse around, you know, Radio Row. Let me watch you out. I might be back late on some occasions here getting back from the break. All right. Okay. So I guess we should actually do what we're paid to do here, and that's talk about sports and the NBA trade deadline coming our way in exactly two weeks from today, Thursday, February 8th. We have already seen some blockbuster deals throughout this NBA season. The first was the Beard making his departure from Philadelphia to L.A. At first, it did not seem like James Harden would work out with the Clippers. Since that point, 8-10 and 10 at the end of November, L.A. has won 20 of its last 24 games. The Raptors have been big sellers ahead of the deadline. O.G. Ananobi traded from Toronto to the New York Knicks. That has been great. A 10-2 record for New York with Ananobi in the lineup. Not the returns just yet with Pascal Siakam in Indiana. They have lost all three games with Siakam in the lineup. Terry Rozier, the latest trade earlier this week, traded from Charlotte to Miami, made his debut last night for the Heat. They were an 11-point home favorite against the Memphis Grizzlies. They lost big against Memphis, who won outright as an 11-point underdog. Rozier played 29 minutes, only scored nine points. Yeah, and again, we're taking a look at all these notable trades here that pop up. And again, the one that's listed first, James Harden. It's very rare, Ben, in instances where you might say this was a home run for both franchises here. James Harden didn't want to be in Philadelphia anymore. Who knows what it would have been if he stayed and was unhappy and being a distraction in Nick Nurse's first yeah. year. And by the way, Nick Nurse at his opening press conference like, hey, man, I really would like to coach James Harden. Like, I don't know what happened on that last regime, but if I had my druthers, I'd like him to be here. So you basically trade him away. You don't get a huge return back, but he goes to the Clippers, and it didn't start well, similar to what we're taking a look at maybe a Pascal Siakam not starting out with there with the Indiana Pacers. But from a Clippers perspective now, it looks like it fits like a glove. Look at the Philadelphia 76ers, one of the best teams in the Eastern Conference. So a trade like addition by subtraction in Philadelphia worked addition by addition out there for the Clippers worked out really well in their favor. Yeah. It's interesting to see that worked out on such a lightning rod player such as James Harden. The vibe's incredibly high in Philadelphia. Joel Embiid having a historically efficient and incredible season in the NBA. And in L.A., James Harden has been great. More of a facilitator role for the Clippers. They have all the superstars to feed, and so far, it's been really, really good. When James Harden was traded, the Clippers' price to win an NBA championship went from plus 2,700, 27 to 1, cut by more than half all the way down to 13 to 1. I couldn't believe it. I thought it was a terrible move by the odds makers. Now the Clippers at plus 850 fourth best price to win an NBA championship. So we're two weeks away from the NBA trade deadline. The Miami Heat have already made it a move, already made a move, adding Terry Rozier. We expect them to be continued buyers at the deadline. 
The Lakers are always looking to buy as LeBron James is telling Rob Palenka, hey man, make some moves so we can be a little bit better. The Lakers a game below 500 at this moment. The Celtics, the best team in the NBA, they could add the Milwaukee Bucks with a reinvigorated coaching staff and roster might be making some moves as well. And keep an eye on the New York Knicks. Because where things stand right now, Donnie, in the Eastern Conference, the Knicks 10 games above 500. they won four straight, 10 of the 12 with OG and OB in the lineup. If they make a mother, another move, it's not about getting to the playoffs or hosting a first-round series. It's about contending alongside Boston, Milwaukee, and Philadelphia. Let's take a look at those expected buyers, Ben. We'll start from the bottom here. And as you brought up the New York Knicks, a team on the upswing, made one move here. It's working out well. Hey, you know what? Let's press that needle down a little bit more at the deadline to see if we can become a factor in the Eastern Conference. The Milwaukee Bucks adding. Of course, they're going to add. They're a championship-level contender here that just got Doc Rivers as their coach. They have championship expectations. Yes, they're going to make some moves to improve their team. The Boston Celtics, same boat as the Milwaukee Bucks here. Gunning for an NBA championship. Of course, they're going to move here. The Miami the heat we're always expecting even from the preseason where they wanted Damian Lillard now winding up with Rozier they're still going to add one at the deadline as Pat Riley one of the better GMs in the National Basketball Association but that leaves the one team up top it's the Los Angeles Lakers we're always expecting them to buy because it's LeBron James but what's the point of buying for the Lakers like you're barely a 500 team like who are you buying are you getting rid of LeBron James because you're going to buy back two players that you think will be better than him? Are you getting rid of Anthony Davis to get better players than what they were for Anthony Davis? I don't understand that. And I guess just because LeBron James is there and you have to make a move, like honestly, the Lakers shouldn't even be in that realm. They should be in the sellers category yeah. going like, you know what? I understand we need superstars. Teams or players will always flock to Los Angeles to a certain degree because of the cachet it gets for playing in LA for the Lakers. Yeah. But what would the Lakers move be to make them a championship contender where they would sell pieces of their future i don't see it the lakers are what they are just ride this out see if lebron can get to the playoffs catch lightning in a bottle if not you move on at the end of next off season i don't understand the point the lakers being buyers just for the sake of they have lebron james that that's what it is though right they have lebron james they have anthony davis they made it to the western conference finals despite being the seventh seed in the western conference postseason a year ago they have a 30 to 1 price to win the nba championship this season i want to look around the nba standings if i can quickly to find another team below 500 that has a number even relatively close to that. I think the Golden State Warriors would be that only other team because of the postseason pedigree. And the Dubs price is double that of L.A. The Lakers 30-1, to the Warriors 60-1. to Everybody around that price for L.A., 30-1 to for them. The Miami Heat 34-1, to the Mavericks 35-1, to the Knicks 42-1. to Everybody at least is a couple of games above 500. That's the odds makers, though. And as long as you have LeBron and AD and with how the NBA format works, you just got to be a part of the top 10 to have a shot of being a playoff team in the play in tournament. There are those opportunities out there. Donnie, some of the other teams that are not listed as buyers, the Minnesota Timberwolves, Oklahoma City Thunder, they are the top two teams currently in the NBA's Western Conference. How will those teams continue to be judged? following the trade deadline, approaching All-Star Weekend, when we'll be at 60 games played in the NBA. So as we look at some sellers, we've already seen the Hornets start to make moves. The Wizards fired their head coach, Wes Unsell Jr., earlier this morning. They're atrocious. They have seven wins this year. The Raptors are in a rebuild. The Atlanta Hawks have speculated they might move on from DeJounte Murray. And the Chicago Bulls are in this weird limbo area where they've bought, brought back Zach Levine and DeMar DeRozan, but now finally many games under 500. It might not be worth it. Those are the big names, Donnie, You're those notable players on this list that could be on the move in the next two weeks. And it makes sense for the Chicago Bulls, right? It felt like they had the makings of a really good basketball team. And that whole what, Lonzo Ball injury that basically took him out of the NBA for a couple of years really derailed that because they had to look, hey, we got the scoring two guard. We got the point guard that can distribute here. You got one of those old tough guys there in DeMar DeRozan that can do it all inside the three-point yeah. arc. And you had a big guy in Vucevic. It didn't work out in their favor. They should be sellers here. But you're going down. The one thing I always like to put, like the Atlanta Hawks. The Atlanta Hawks buy and sell every year. Like, what is their MO as a franchise? Yeah. 
guys at this point. It's never like they're all in or all like, ooh, can you pair this guy up with Trey Young? And if it doesn't, we'll move on and get another guy. I thought that the Jonathan Murray move was going to be like, you know what? Now's the team we have the yeah. backcourt. Let's continue to build around it. And this is one of those teams that went to the Eastern Conference Finals just a few short years ago, already in the seller's market, and not because they have an old yeah. team. It's that they just can't figure out components that fit together in order to make a championship-level team. That's a team I want to watch out for to see what they actually do in Atlanta here, Ben. The Bulls three games below 500, but still in the nine spot in the Eastern Conference standings at this moment. If the season ended today, listen, we're already past the halfway point of this NBA campaign. Despite being 18 and 26, Atlanta would be the 10th seed and into the Eastern Conference play-in tournament. Atlanta has reached the postseason the last three years. Now under Quinn Snyder, eight games below 500, much like you, Donnie. I thought DeJounte Murray was going to be an exciting piece in the backcourt alongside yeah. Trey Young. He would be the guy I would point to first and foremost that wherever he goes, if he is dealt ahead of the deadline and the Lakers have been rumored to already be in the running for DeJounte Murray, he is a guy that would move a market, a conference championship price, an NBA championship price at this moment. Oh, by the way, the Atlanta Hawks, the second worst underdog covering team in the NBA, now six and 16 against the spread. So it has not been a good year in the ATL by any means. We will get you ready for a Thursday night in the association with the two premier NBA handicappers on this network. That's Donnie. I'm Ben. We do it up next here on the early line. Sunday night as the Chiefs are now headed back to a sixth championship game, an extremely fun, clean game, and then the hijinks ensue. And I thought it was just irresponsible for him to take that deep shot into the end zone. I talked a lot about it on X. I thought that they should have hit that underneath route to Diggs. It was wide open. It would have been easily a first down. Newswire, only on Sports Grid. Kyle Shanahan said after the game, it was the same shoulder that made Debo Samuel miss two games throughout this regular season in 2023. Last time it was a scab there fraction, he missed a couple weeks. By video, we don't see that. It was the play that he got hit and had a head check. It's more believed to be a muscle injury. X-rays are proven to be negative. They're saying 50-50 right now. The early line, only on Sports Grid. This will not end well in Milwaukee. They will flame out. There will be problems. And we will see what happens of who's the next domino to go. Does Giannis just sign an extension, ask out after a year? Do they move on from Dave? Or do they start blowing up some of the other guys, Brooke Lopez, Bobby Portis, so on and so forth? It'll be worth watching. Betting above the rim, only on Sports Grid. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. We'll look at the Heisman Trophy. The early line. And what it all means individual success. You should have tried to get something for Anthony Rendon. Not bought at the deadline. Newswire. We're getting a lot of news trades, cuts. And some movement in terms of starting quarterbacks. Pharrell, coast to coast. I want to watch great players make buckets and win games. Game time decisions. You have no idea what the heck the Blazers are doing and what they're doing. In game live. Just prime like a time. Yard for a grand slam. The bottom of the fourth inning in a 12 to 2 baseball game. We got football scores going on at Wrigley right now. Sports race. That was late good night. We waited for one and a half. We got paid. Yeah. Didn't like the two and a half. 
jumped on. There's no taking weeks off in golf betting ever. These are the best weeks to bet. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. A Thursday night around the association. Previews and picks live right here on this Thursday on the early line on Sports Grid. Familiar foes from Eastern Conference Finals of the past facing off tonight in Miami. The Heat, second leg of a home back-to-back, but an eight-point home underdog against the Boston Celtics. Of course, the C is the best team in all of the association this year. The record for Boston that is best in the league, 34 and 10, 14 and and 9 away from Beantown in Miami. Disappointing effort last night at full strength, virtually for the Heat as an 11-point home favorite against the shorthanded Memphis Grizzlies in the debut of Terry Rozier. They lost outright by 9, 105 96 as that 11 point home favorite against Memphis Terry Rozier first game in Miami now against his former team he played his first four NBA seasons with the Celtics eight point spread Donnie seems a little bit large tonight in South Beach it is a little large spread here but again are we going to doubt the Boston Celtics here coming into this basketball game healthy Porzingis sat out the last game looks like he's anticipated to be back in the lineup which gives you Holiday White Brown and Tatum along with Porzingis something just isn't right yet with the Miami Heat eventually they are going to get it mm-hmm. together because once you have Terry Rozier you get a little bit of the nerves you're flying in late maybe you don't know the entire playbook there on offense trying to get your shots up will probably be better tonight settling in but this is one of those games where until the Miami Heat I see it on the court I'm not going to be able to trust it just yet even though Jimmy Butler has been back not playing like the Jimmy Butler that we know I know I'm going to get a rested Celtics team in here the only thing that could knock you off is hey man the Celtics flew into Miami early they hit the club scene last night they're not ready to play I'm going to buck that trend I think the Celtics will be able to handle the heat here in Miami Boston has been the NBA's best team all year long booked as a favorite in 42 of the 44 games again Best record in the NBA, 34 and 10 straight up as the favorite, 2019 and two against the number. When you look at what they have done on the road this year as the road favorite, 18, 11 and two. That's 21, 19 and two against the spread as the favorite overall this year. 224 and a half by NBA regular season standards, Donnie. That's still pretty much middle of the pack, maybe on the lower side. Last night, it was 215 for that over-under. Between Miami and Memphis, game stayed well under the heat, unable to reach that century mark. Terry Rozier, his points prop last night in his Miami debut, 16 and a half. No number listed just yet against his former team in Boston. I would keep an eye on that prop. Elsewhere in the Eastern Conference, the Indiana Pacers looking for their first win with Pascal Siakam in the organization. A five-point home favorite tonight against the Philadelphia 76ers and Joel Embiid. Embiid's first game since the 70-point, 18-rebound performance earlier this week on a Monday night against the San Antonio Spe- uh, San Antonio Spurs. Excuse me. What do you expect for the encore performance out of JoJo tonight in Indy? Yeah, maybe a little bit less than the 70, but you take a look at his last five games, which he has played in 41 points, 41 points, 36, 33, and 70 here. And also, we still should have some decent tempo in this game. 237 and a half looks like it might be a nice over. I do think Joel Embiid has a big night, but also what are we waiting for here? Tyrese Halliburton to get back into the lineup for the Pacers, not expected to be in that lineup tonight. This should be a Sixers victory, even though it is on the road. We know the Sixers play very, very good basketball at home, but still above 500 on the road. And if you are a man down like the Pacers will be tonight give me the Philadelphia 76ers to go on the road and cover just like I like the Celtics Tyrese Halliburton has really been out of the lineup for the last week and a half for Indiana the Pacers of course who got off to a very hot start in terms of offensive output this year over in 14 of their first 15 games over in 16 of their first 18 games this season 
under in seven of their last eight without their point guard really orchestrating things offensively. Meanwhile, the Sixers have the highest over percentage in all of the association entering tonight at 62%. 26 games over for Philly, 16 games under. The Pacers are a decent underdog this year. 15, 10, and 1 against the spread. Not many better teams covering numbers than Philadelphia. 27 and 15 against the number this season. And as a favorite, 23 and 10. The best cover percentage for any team as a favorite that has been booked as a favorite more than 13 times. That is how good Philly has been, even when they've been expected to win games. 36 and a half. The points prop for Joel Embiid. He has scored at least 30 points in 21 straight games. Even when he had 70 the other night, five assists. Game prior on Saturday against Charlotte, five assists. Only two assists in the game on Friday in Orlando, but 10 dimes against the Denver Nuggets. I think Joel Embiid's doing a pretty good job of facilitating, averaging about five and a half assists in the month of January. His assist prop tonight five and a half even money to that over a big night inside Madison Square Garden Denver continues its East Coast road trip here against the New York Knicks a two-point spread in favor of the Nugs the over under 222 and a half again the New York Knicks have won 10 of 12 games with OG and OB in the lineup in all 10 victories the total has stayed under 222 and a half that total tonight Last five games here for Jalen Brunson, point guard here for the uh, New York Knicks. How about this? 30 points, 30 points, 41, 38, and 30 here. Absolutely getting after it. If you're looking at this number, that is a nice line here for the Knicks. Dogs in the guard at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and take the Knicks tonight because we're anticipating that starting lineup. Brunson, DiVincenzo, Ananobi, Randall, and Hartenstein. Look, I like Denver. It's hard to say this. Hey, look, basically pick them game, almost like you equated to the Kansas City Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes. Any given night, spreads under three. Just take the Denver Nuggets. I hear you. I think the guard is going to be rocking tonight. Give me the slight dog price on the Knicks here. The New York Knicks under in... 11 of their last 12 games overall. Again, winning 10 of their last 12, but only as a dog outright twice. Not a great underdog this year as uh, things go for the New York Knicks. 7, 9, and 2 against the spread. The Nuggets have been booked as a favorite in the far majority of their games this year. 19, 21, and 2 against the number. A two-point road favorite tonight. Nikola Jokic coming off a 30-plus point triple-double the other night. His triple-double prop against the New York Knicks inside Madison Square Garden, plus 230. Now, we know that the Joker is not motivated by the individual race for the NBA MVP award, but he's been stacking up big performances here right alongside Joel Embiid, plus 130 for JoJo to win his second consecutive MVP award. Nikola Jokic just over a dollar behind at plus 250. A playoff rematch tonight in San Francisco between the Northern California rivals, the Sacramento Kings, and the Golden State Warriors. Of course, the Dubs returning to action after missing a week due to the untimely death of their assistant coach, Dejan Milojovic. They returned in a big way last night, 22 point victory against the Atlanta Hawks. They covered as a six and a half point favorite tonight at home inside the Chase Center in San Francisco, the two point underdog against the Sacramento Kings. Yeah, the Warriors have had enough time off here and played last night, but still not a road game playing in their own building. They'll be fine energy-wise, but the only question is going to be is when you line these basketball games up, we talked about it yesterday, the energy on the court, the emotional night it was, taking it again, I think there's just a general letdown tonight from an emotional standpoint for the Golden State Warriors, and it tells you a lot that the Kings are coming in here after a great performance from the Warriors last night, that they're favored in this ballgame. I think it's tough to get up for this game for the Warriors. Not to say they can't win it and won't win it but I'm just looking for the Kings here from that emotional standpoint how big a night it was last night it's only natural for a slight letdown here for the Warriors I'll go Kings tonight the Warriors have been a really good underdog this season in fact Sacramento and Golden State the two best cover teams as a dog this year the Dubs of course the underdog here getting two points 12 and 5 against the spread but only four outright victories as an underdog four and 13 straight up That's an interesting distinction for a team in Golden State who if they're booked as an underdog, you would expect those games to be close and they would probably pull off a couple of outright upsets. Not necessarily the case for the Warriors. When you look at this Golden State team, though, 
They can't just keep covering numbers as a dog. They need to start winning outright. Three games below 500. They have officially reached their halfway point of this 2023-24 season after last night. 41 games for Golden State, 19 and 22 straight up. From Northern California, we go to Southern California. In Los Angeles, the Lakers a four and a half point favorite against the Chicago Bulls. The over under 229. The Lakers coming off a loss in the Battle of LA just a few nights ago. No LeBron James dealing with an ankle issue in that game. He is listed as in tonight. 25 and a half. The points prop for the King. Yeah, and I actually like the Los Angeles Lakers tonight, even though I don't like them as a basketball team. I think the matchup is good against the Bulls. The Bulls aren't full tilt. But also, Ben, we just talked about a scenario where why would the Lakers be buying? Do you know what else you have to do? You have to sell your front office and your management that they should be buyers as well at the deadline, which means pick up a couple games here, get some momentum, get back over 500 here and say, you know what? We might be one piece away from catching fire and really doing some damage in the Western Conference. Give me the Lakers tonight. I'll lay it at four and a half. Nikola Vucevic, pretty much an automatic double-double, reflected in yeah, his yes. odds to record a double-double tonight at minus 300. 18 and a half, the points prop, 12 and a half, the rebounding prop for Vucevic. We showed you the Chicago Bulls two weeks out from the trade deadline. Are they sellers ahead of that deadline in the association? One final game to look at tonight around the association. We go to Brooklyn. The Nets a four-point home underdog against the Timberwolves. Brooklyn was a four-point home underdog earlier this week during Rivals Week against the Knicks. The Knicks won that game by five. The Nets have not covered in eight of their last 10 games as an underdog, but the two covers, two outright victories for Brooklyn, plus 144 on that money line, Donnie. I'm going right back to the well here. I told you I like the Brooklyn Nets against the Knicks. They actually had that lead entering into the fourth quarter and lost it. I'm going to say and go back and give me the four points tonight here with the Brooklyn Nets as I think there's a legitimate chance they can win, but I'll take the points just to be safe. The T-Wolves continuing an East Coast swing last night in the nation's capital, an 11-point victory against the Washington Wizards did not cover. Despite Minnesota having the tied best record in the Western Conference, 31-13, and alongside the Oklahoma City Thunder, Minnesota booked as a favorite 33 times, 16-15-2. Not the best cover team when they are expected to win and do so rather comfortably. I might sprinkle on that money line for the Brooklyn Nets, second leg of a back-to-back for Minnesota, plus 144. Again, that number, a four-point dog. Not the most robust night in men's college basketball. Only one top 25 team in action. A top 10 team, number nine, Arizona. A 17 and a half point road <laughs> favorite in Corvallis against Oregon State. The Beavs at the bottom of the Pac-12. Yeah, good luck in that game here. It's one of those where you take a look at how advanced is that game going to be? Does Arizona really need to be by that much? And maybe they just get lulled to sleep in this game. I guess I'll lean towards the points in this one, Ben. That's a lot for a road team. Oregon State 1-6 and six straight up in Pac-12 play throughout this season. Let me see if I can find their trends, though, because if I remember correctly, they've been covering a lot of numbers booked as an underdog. Let's take a look here again. We're talking 17 and a half points. They've lost five straight games. They have covered in four of their last six. They have not covered in their last two. 18-point dog against Colorado. 15-point dog against Utah. Both of those games on the road. In their games at home as an underdog in Pac-12 play, they are 3-1 and one against the spread. And, of course, that marquee showdown in the SEC, top 10 tilt in women's college basketball, South Carolina and LSU. We'll give you best bets up next.
last games of the year, Warren, on Sunday night as the Chiefs are now headed back to a sixth championship game. An extremely fun, clean game, and then the hijinks ensue. And I thought it was just irresponsible for him to take that deep shot into the end zone. I talked a lot about it on X. I thought that they should have hit that underneath route to Diggs. It was wide open. It would have been easily a first down. Newswire, only on Sports Grid. Kyle Shanahan said after the game, it was the same shoulder that made Debo Samuel miss two games throughout this regular season in 2023. Last time it was a scapular fracture, he missed a couple weeks. By video, we don't see that. It was the play that he got hit and had a head check. It's more believed to be a muscle injury. X-rays are proven to be negative. They're saying 50-50 right now. The early line, only on Sports Grid. This will not end well in Milwaukee. They will flame out. There will be problems, and we will see what happens of who's the next domino to go. Does Giannis just sign an extension? Ask out after a year? Do they move on from Dave, or do they start blowing up some of the other guys, Brook Lopez, Bobby Portis, so on and so forth? It'll be worth watching. Betting above the rim, only on Sports Grid. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. We'll look at the Heisman Trophy the early line. and what it all means, individual success. You should have tried to get something for Anthony Rendon, not fought at this deadline. Newswire. We're getting a lot of news, trades, cuts, and some movement in terms of starting quarterbacks. Pharrell, quarterback. coast to coast. I want to watch great players make buckets and win games. Game time decisions. I have no idea what the heck the Blazers are doing and what they're doing. In game live. Just prime a time. Yard for a grand slam. In the bottom of the fourth inning in a 12 to 2 baseball game. We got football scores going on at Wrigley right now. Sports race no, late night. We waited for a one and a half. We got paid. Yeah. We did like the two and a half. Yeah. Jumped on. There's no taking weeks off in golf betting ever. These are the best weeks to bet. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Live right here on the early line. We end out this Thursday. We close out our three hours together here all across the Sports Grid Network. I am Ben. He is Donnie. Even though we depart for the day until a conference championship football Friday tomorrow, the Sports Grid app never leaves your side. You can download it at both the Apple and the Play Store by scanning that QR code on your screen right there. All of our information and insight, including five-star plays those are known as best bets and so are these before we say farewell and goodbye it is time for bye 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 it's a thursday drs what do we got cooking I'm going to take a look here at the Philadelphia 76ers go with a player's prop. No, it's not on Joel Embiid to get a lot of points and a lot of rebounds tonight. I'm looking towards Tyrese Maxey, but not towards an over, Ben, towards an under. Points prop listed here at the FanDuel Sportsbook at 29 and a half, even though I think the pace is going to be good. I'm going to go under on Maxey. The case in point being, in his last 11 games, Ben, he's only hit the 30-point marker twice here. So nine of 11 games he hasn't hit it, I'll go with that trend. I'm going to take under 29 and a half points for Tyrese Maxey tonight with the Philadelphia 76ers the 76ers a five-point road favorite in Indianapolis against the Pacers no Tyrese Halliburton Pascal Siakam trying to get his first win in Indiana they are 0-3 since Siakam joined the team at that Pacers organization a huge game in college basketball tonight only one top 25 team in action on the men's side don't worry Women's college basketball has you covered. A matchup of the two most recent national champions in the sport. Number one, South Carolina, who won the title two years ago against the defending champs, number nine, LSU. To Baton Rouge, we go. Two of the top four scoring offenses in all of the sport. LSU, the best scoring offense in the country, nearly 92 points per game. South Carolina is just also a top five scoring defense in the country. But I think LSU will score enough at home tonight 
despite being a nine and a half point underdog to push us over a total of 152 and a half. He's Donnie. I'm Ben. We'll see you on a football Friday tomorrow at 8 a.m. Eastern.